Yeah, so it's been a long week. I'm getting thrashed tonight. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Raider World. So in this episode on the Eldorado Project, we have a lineup of bagger parts from Thrash Supply. All right, so welcome back to another episode on the Eldorado Project. A lot of stuff has been happening. If you've already seen the previous episodes, you already know. So it's been a long week. I figured, hey, you know what? Let's finish this strong with some Thrash Supply bagger parts. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of these, all made in America. I have them on the Road Glide Special. If you guys already seen those videos, they've been performing great, they feel great. So I said, hey, you know what? Let's also add them to the Eldorado Project. I did go on their website. I did pick up as many gold accent colors as I could. They are discontinuing the gold, unfortunately, but hopefully they bring it back. Pretty simple install. I thought about doing separate videos for these, but I said, hey, you know what? This is pretty simple. Let's just knock this all out at once. So other than that, guys, let's get these unboxed and installing the bike. So first thing I'm gonna get to is the adjustable bagger brake arm. But first, I'm gonna remove the stock arm. In order to do that, I'm gonna remove the floorboard brackets down here. I'm gonna take this all off at once just to keep everything together. Then I'll reinstall it and then we'll change out the floorboards. You have one screw for each bracket and they're a 516 hex bit. So if you do have some spacers, make sure you keep track of those. And with all these, you wanna make sure you thread chase all your holes. So to remove the stock brake arm, you have a 5 8 nut right here. And on the back side, you have a pin with a cotter pin. Once you pull that cotter pin out, I'll pull this pivot pin out or a clevis pin. Just keep track of that spacer that's in there. It's pretty small. And then I'll just swing the rear brake master cylinder up and over. So you have your cotter pin, your clevis pin or pivot pin, and then you have a spacer in between. And I'll just put these together so I don't lose them. Now I'll just take this nut off and it's a 5 8 deep socket. So you have your nut with a spacer and an O-ring. So I'll rotate the brake lever towards the rear. I'll pull it back some. I'll rotate it forward and pull it out. So for the stock brake lever, you are gonna reuse the bushings. I'll just use a socket and push these out. Don't forget this O-ring that's all the way towards the back. I'll clean that off and I'll also add some grease to that. So here I have the adjustable bagger brake arm. I'll break this down so I can add my bushings and also adjust my settings. Now for the adjustable bagger brake arm, you will need their foot peg or their brake pedal that's compatible with the brake arm. I did choose to go with the P54 slim peg in the gold. Like I said, they did discontinue these, but they do have them in red, black, chrome, and different colors. So you have your foot peg, you have your spacer, and your bolt. So here I'm just using a 5 8 deep socket to knock these bushings out. There's one. And two. So you have these notches along the side. One mark, two marks, and three marks. Your one mark is your stock setting. Your two marks is your mid setting. And three marks is your lowest setting. So you have three screws on this side. You have three screws on this side. I'll go ahead and take these screws out. So you have three sets of notches on this side and you have one single notch on this side, which helps you line it up. Right now it's set at the stock setting. I'm going to take this off move it over to the two notches, which is the mid setting. Now the screws are different sizes, so you can't really mix these up. You have one mark, two marks, three marks on one side, and then you have one single notch on the other. That notch is what you're gonna use to line up which setting you want. I'll move it to the two marks, 
for the mid setting. I'll add some blue Loctite and get these back in. So there's no torque value on these, just get them down nice and snug. I'll reinstall the stock plastic bushings. I'll add some grease so they slide in a little easier. You can just press these stock bushings in. Once again, you can use a 5 8 deep socket to kind of help guide them in. Get one on one side and on the other. Just make sure you have equal spacing on both sides. So I'll get the old grease off the stock brake arm post and I'll apply some new grease. I'll reinstall the stock O-ring. I'll slide the brake hub onto the post and then just rotate it back. Don't forget about the rear brake master cylinder. I'll swing that back over and get it in. Then I'll reinstall the stock clevis pin, the spacer and the cotter pin. Now if your cotter pin is bent out of shape, you probably want to replace it or you kind of form it back together. You want it to be able to slide through that hole. Now I'll reinstall the stock O-ring, washer, and nut. So for the adjustable brake arm, you only have so many positions you can put it in. I'm going to put it at the lowest setting, so it's going to bring it down and forward. Now you could go lower, obviously you don't want this to interfere with this or you won't be able to break. There's no torque value for these screws, just get them down nice and snug. So I'm using the P54 slim peg in the gold, so you'll take your spacer, you have a flat side and then you have a beveled side. You want the flat side going in. So this hole is already threaded so there's no nut on the other side. So I'll take my screw, I'll insert it into here. Now before I add any Loctite, I'm going to get my floorboard on to see where I want to set this at and then I'll add some blue Loctite and tighten it down. And to tighten this down, I'm using a 5 16 extended hex bit. Now I'll reinstall the stock floorboard setup. If you haven't already, go ahead and thread chase your holes. Make sure you clean your screws off, get any of that old Loctite off. Don't forget your spacers. You have your screw with washer on this one. I'll put in my spacer. I'll set that on. Have my other screw with blue Loctite. I'll get this one started. Stock floorboard side-by-side -side comparison on here. Now the thrashing floorboard is a little smaller as you can see. Now I'll switch out the floorboards. You have a screw on each side securing it down to the brackets. You have a 3 16 hex bit on this side and then a 7 16 nut on this side. So here you have the Apex floorboards, quality product from Thrash Supply, all made here in the USA. You have your knurling right here, great grip on these. It's the same as the other floorboards. If you enjoy turning those corners and you're scraping your floorboards, they do add these scrape plates that you can easily replace. You install those right here. 
Here you have your full board clevises. These only go in one spot. And then obviously they have those adapters that you can purchase to raise up your floorboards. Now with all these screws, you wanna make sure you add some blue Loctite. To tighten down the scrape plate screws, I'm using a 3 32nd hex bit. There's no torque value on these. Just get these down nice and snug. You don't wanna over tighten and possibly strip out your screw. So the U-shape on your clevis, you wanna orientate that inboard. And to tighten down the clevis screws, I'm using a 3 16 hex bit. So it's gonna be the same thing on the other floorboard. Now when you're tightening these down, you don't wanna set them down on your table because this will scratch up your surface. So to mount the apex floorboards onto the stock brackets, you're gonna use the OEM shoulder bolts. They're gonna go in right through here. There's no nut on the other side. They're gonna thread in right here. Same with these, I'll add some blue Loctite. Now, if I do want to go a little lower, I can take this assembly off. I'll go down to that third mark. That way I come down a little lower, but it'll still be forward. Now, after you get this all installed, you want to make sure that you have good operation on your brake pedal. You want to make sure you have clearance here. I'll go ahead and take this screw out, add some blue Loctite and tighten it down. All right, so here I have the Thrashing Canyon foot pegs. These are gonna be my passenger foot pegs. They have a stainless steel clevis. They do have these available for Dyna, FXR, XL, and then obviously your Touring. So here we have the passenger foot peg. You have two screws right here for your bracket. We're not gonna remove that, but if you wanted to adjust it, you can move it up or down for taller or shorter passengers. Now to remove this foot peg, all you have is a pin and then you have a snap ring on the other side. Now you might need a tool to push this pin out. Now when you take your peg out, just keep track of your D-spring, you will reuse it. Now as you're looking at it, you want this flat edge going towards your mount and then the curved side is gonna go towards the rear or you can have it going towards the front. So here I have the peg and the clevis. You want your clevis rounded edge facing up. And of course you want your thrashing logo facing up. Then I have my screw with Loctite and washer. I'll install this. And to tighten the screw down, I'm using an extended 5 16 hex bit. So I won't tighten it down all the way. I'll see where I need to adjust it. So I'll take my D spring I'll stick this in with the foot peg, just stick it in all together, get it all lined up. I'll reinstall the snap ring. And then from here, I can adjust the foot peg forward or back. I'm just gonna keep it straight up with the thrashing logo facing up.
All right, so here I have the thrashing shifter and the shifter peg. Now you do need a shifter peg to work with this setup. So I went with the shorty. I like the shorty. I do have it on the road glide, but they also have the stock length. So here you have the shifter peg with the thrash and supply logo. Here you have your ARP bolt. You will need a 12 point socket for this one. It'll just go in right through here. I'll also add some blue Loctite to this one. So this is threaded. There's no nut on the back. So this just screws in right into here. So here I have the stock shifter and peg. Now you can make note of your measurements, but it won't really matter if you already changed out your floorboards because the apex floorboards are thinner. So they did drop down some compared to the stock. So all I'm gonna do is install the shifter to where I feel it's gonna be comfortable and then I can always adjust it later. So to remove the stock shifter, I do have a 3 16 hex bit and a 7 16 nut. So here you have the stock versus the shorty. So to tighten this down, I'm using a 3 16 hex bit and a 7 16 wrench. Go ahead and thread this in. So it's up to you what logo you want facing up. You have Made in USA, or you can do thrash in or supply company. And to tighten this down, I'm using a 3 8 12 point socket. So here's Thrashin's Bagger Easy Shift inner arm lever. This is gonna replace that stock lever, just a better pull. And here you have the shift linkage. This is for baggers with forward controls. So here you have the stock set up with the inner arm and your shift linkage. What I'll do is remove this inner arm first. That way I can keep the setting where it's at. I can always adjust it later and also adjust it up here. But for now, I'm just gonna remove the inner arm. I'll replace that, and then I'll replace the shifter linkage. So to remove this inner arm, you have a 3 16 screw on the bottom, and then you have a half inch nut and a half inch bolt. So I'm using a half inch socket and a half inch wrench to remove the top. So you're not going to reuse your stock hardware. Thrashing supplies you with all new hardware. You don't need to pull it out all the way. Just kind of slide it there. Let this rest. So here's your side by side comparison between your thrashing and your stock arm. You have your screw on the bottom. I'll go ahead and take this out. So I'll pull this shifter out a little bit so I can set this in here. So now all I'll do is just set this bolt in here inside the shift linkage. I'll get this set into here. And then from here, I can also adjust my shifter to where I want it. I want it right about there. I can always adjust it later. So you just wanna push it in until it's set. Now I'll just take my screw with some blue Loctite and install it on the bottom. So the torque value for this bottom screw is six to seven foot pounds or 72 inch pounds. Now I'll completely remove the linkage. I already took off the hardware from the front. Now I just need to remove this screw from the back and I'm using a 7 16 wrench. Just make sure you clean off all this old Loctite and thread chase these holes. All right, so you're gonna have this similar setup you have a screw on the back that's gonna go inside of here. And then on the front, you have a screw with a nut. I'll get this one started. Don't forget your Loctite. And to tighten this down, it's a 3 8 12 point socket. We'll stick our bolt through here. And then put our nut on the back. 
So I'm using a half inch wrench with a 3 8 12 point socket. So what's great about this linkage, you just loosen up the nuts on each end. You can spin this to bring it down or bring it up. And you can make all your adjustments right here and then just tighten down your nuts.